to the She Leads podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Garland, CEO and founder of She Leads Media, a global media company dedicated to the advancement of women leaders and entrepreneurs worldwide. I'm also an adjunct professor at NYU and Rice University, where I teach on the topic of entrepreneurship. I'm a mom to two wonderful young men and married to my best friend from college. Join me each week as I dive into raw conversations with remarkable, uncompromising, and inspirational women entrepreneurs and leaders. My hope is that these conversations and their advice will encourage you to put yourself out there and gain the visibility that you and all women deserve. We're all about stripping away the sugar-coated conversations and moving boldly in the direction of our magnificent dreams. For far too long, women have been conditioned to soften their words, modify their actions, and show up in the world to conform to outdated at best and harmful at worst cultural norms and ideals. Why? To keep those who are outside of the power structures from gaining power, prestige, wealth, and influence. This has prevented women from being recognized and respected as the powerful leaders that we truly are. The She Leads podcast is here to shine the light on all the incredible women, to encourage us to show up, speak up, and showcase the amazing work we do, speak with confidence about the innovative and transformational thoughts that we have, and celebrate the positive impact that we are making in this world, both personally and professionally. So let's do this. Let's lead. Everybody, and welcome back to the She Leads Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the She Leads Podcast Network. It's the podcast network for women by women. So today I am so excited to welcome my next guest. Her name is Latia Vaughn, and she's the CEO and founder of the You Network. She's also a futurist and is among approximately 1% of African American women futurists in North America. Her data-driven insight and future foresight have contributed to igniting individuals and organizations, including Fortune 500 corporations such as Meta, Facebook, Geico, Instagram, and Google. She was also just a featured speaker at the Black Enterprise Women of Power Summit, which I am so excited about, and I can't wait for her to tell us how that all went. Uh, She's referred to as the dream pusher, as she's not only a transformational speaker and corporate trainer, but she's also the best-selling author of Rediscover You, Dare to Evolve, which delves into the power and necessity of evolution while also teaching readers how to get out of the quicksand of life. Welcome to the She Leads podcast, Latia. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> I'm Thank so you happy. so much for having me. Yes! Listen, we're going to have a good old time today. We're going to have a good old time today. Thank you so much for having me. I am so happy <laughs> to be talking to you. You are definitely the first futurist that I have had on the show. So we're going to talk about all the things. <laughs> so uh, before, we, before we get there, before we talk about the future, maybe let's talk a little bit about the past. So you are such an accomplished person. You are out there. You're talking about where we're sort of going as you know a society, as women. And I'd love to understand how you sort of got into all of this because it's good work. Yeah. Well, I started in corporate America. I went to an um, historically black college at HBCU, Hampton University. Woo woo. Um, <laughs> and so my formal education and degrees are in marketing and branding. Always love business. Okay. Straight out of college, I went and jumped into corporate America and I started off with management development, building core competencies, professional development for management level on uh, levels. Um, from there, we started a, within our region, a women's professional network, because at that time, over 20 years ago, there were not a lot of hubs for women to come together uh, and to not only cultivate their, their skill sets, right, but also a place for us to just kind of share and just be. And, and so uh, I'm very proud of that work that I did in corporate America. And, and I left corporate America almost 20 years ago because I felt that I could serve humanity in a greater way. You know, whenever you are a part of an organization, 
depending on the direction and the flow they wanted to go in, there could be a cap on innovation. And so I knew that I could utilize more of my skill sets, helping several organizations, also helping women that want to get into business. And and how do I become, you know, a wife and a mom and still navigate the entrepreneurial journey? And so that's where the evolution specialist came. Okay. So that started off with, you know, coaching things that I'm innate at doing and helping women build their businesses. That's where the dream pusher emerged. And Mm -hmm. when we started seeing all of the data and me helping organizations with consulting work and professionals, you know, and women owned and led operated businesses, that's when the future is is just kept evolving Mm -hmm. into that nature. And so that's where I am today. Everything that I do, anything that I touch is to help people or businesses evolve. And so Mm -hmm. that is what we do as a company. That is what I do personally. That is my passion because I feel that there is always another layer to purpose. We just, sometimes we would like to, and tell me, tell me your thoughts because I, even with you, I know that with you being in corporate America, I define myself by a title and role. So when I left Mm -hmm. corporate America, I also went through a moment of transition of well, who, who am I now? Okay, because yeah. I define myself by a role. And then I realize we are not what we do, but I am what I possess. So mm. what are all the qualities that I possess that I can offer up to the world? And mm. so that's when I started to kind of lean into that other side of me to really help walk women through their transitions in lives and in them building their businesses. I love everything that you have just said. And I think that there's so much to kind of tease out of all of that and, and mm-hmm. talk about. I too came from the corporate world. And then, you know, I, I just felt like you're saying it was somewhat restrictive. You don't get to be your full self. I mean, some people do. I think yeah. it wasn't the case for me. And I had been very successful in corporate America. And I thought to myself, how hard could it be to start a business? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> surprise, I found surprise. <laughs> Big surprise. Um, yeah. And I think that that is like really unfortunate. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I, I do also teach. So I teach entrepreneurship at okay. NYU and, and at Rice University on the undergrad and the grad level. And Mm. I I had this conversation with my grad class last week about, you know, as we're coming up in our education, we're not taught how to not only work for a company, because I think we're all taught Mm. how to work for a company. We're not taught how to be entrepreneurs because I think our lives call for that at certain Mm -hmm. points and especially as women. Like yep. if we were able to build the skill sets of like, okay, for a couple of years, I'll work in corporate and then maybe I'll start a business and then, you know, oh, maybe it's time for me to go back to corporate. If we could like move through that easily, uh-huh. we would all be so much better off. And I'm not yeah. sure even where I'm going with all of that, yeah. but we're just, we're not taught properly. Oh no. But just like you said, we weren't taught it. The school system was ba- was built in the industrial age. So the goal of the school system was was not to necessarily learn, but to comply. And so yeah. it, from the start, that's one of the first places that we as children learn shame, not to explore creativity. But if you stand out too much, you get called out. If you go too low, you get called out. And mm-hmm. so it keeps everybody in alignment, in line, like, a, you know, just kind of just sheep kind of going down this this trail. And so it does not allow us to explore the ends of ourselves where the creative genius is sparked. And mm. so I absolutely agree with you. That was the industrial age. The goal during that time was not for you to start your own businesses, but it was for you to come and work in factories. And in order yeah. for you to come and work in a factory, I don't need your innovation. I don't need your input. I just need you to put things on a cog, on machine, and I just need you to come in from sunrise to sunset, and then you go back to your farms, your communities, or wherever you came. And so when you take the reins off, when you take the borders off, that's what's so scary because it's unknown. Because we were never allowed or taught that it is okay to evolve and to explore those ideas. Mm. And so that's why it's so scary for people. And so I agree with you a thousand percent that the journey is not a, just a one shooter. It is ebbs and flows. What we Mm. see on Instagram and social media is, you know, we, they glamorize the 
the pinnacle of entrepreneurship, right? Where you're on the yachts, we're talking, you know, the (laughs) high life, but the bottom, the bulk of entrepreneurship is what's underneath that iceberg. That is the work, the late night, the early mornings, the talking, the trying to get funding, the networking, knowing that the livelihood of others are on your back. That is where the bulk of the work comes from. So the fact that you even teach entrepreneurship, I also salute you and honor you for allowing you to put your life on display to say, hey, these are some things that we weren't taught that we had to figure out. And, mm-hmm. and I'm here to be a resource and, and a, a beacon of knowledge, a, a place that you can come to to ask questions because you're right. We did not have that growing up. We didn't. And again, it's like, I love everything that you just said so much. And it, it's mm. so funny. Like I, I even hesitate to say I teach entrepreneurship because I don't really teach it. Right. It, it's like mm-hmm. I workshop things with students and, and mm. I like that better. Right. So yes, we, we yes, might be yes, talking yes. about a certain topic, but I don't have all of the knowledge. And in fact, I'm learning more from like my undergrad students than anybody else, Mm. especially when it comes to marketing, Mm. because the way that we were taught marketing, it's, it's not this, it's just not the same. Well, it's different. Well, well, you touched on something marketing back in the day when I was in college, it was, I'm going to tell you who you are and you're going to believe it and you're going to buy. But People don't realize the landscape of society and the thought process of different generations has changed, right? So it's not enough for you to tell me who you are. I want to feel who you are. You have to show me who you are. And Mm -hmm. we use the term marketing and branding so interchangeably, we forgot the meaning of both. Your brand is what your company, what the people say about you right? Your marketing is the process and the journey that you take them on to lead you to the final product, right? The advertising is in how many times and how many different ways can I say the same message, right? So you would come to somebody and say, um, you know, uh, I am a powerful woman, right? And when you, and when you say that, um, that is your marketing, you're all the subliminal messages that shows that I'm a powerful woman. And then when you go to your neighbor and you say, um, I'm, uh, I'm a powerful woman five times. I'm a powerful woman. 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 (laughs) It's the advertising. How many different ways can I say the same message to get to my target audience? But if you turn to your neighbor or you turn to someone you know, or call your girlfriend on the phone and says, I heard that Mm -hmm. you are a powerful Mm -hmm. woman. That is branding. It is what people experience about you. And so oftentimes we are so focused on selling a product, we stop building a tribe Mm -hmm. because your tribe, your community is the ones that go to bat for you. Beyonce doesn't have to have a marketing campaign. She just drops a product or an album (laughs) and the world talks because her tribe takes care of it for you. Apple does it, right? Rihanna Navy, every high end brand, right? You know, Apple versus Android users, your tribe becomes the army that sig- sends signals out to across the world to buy your product. And yeah. so to your point in terms of, you know, uh, how we give messaging, how we display ourselves as women, even with building a business, I would also put a pin in that we we cannot and should not be afraid to even market our products and our in our the services that we have to offer to the world. Because a lot of times the the talk of even money statistically women shy away from yeah, because we were excluded from that conversation for so long. Yeah, that's such a big topic to, to talk about. And it's something that I definitely like to talk to everybody about. Like we need yeah. to be able to have all of those financial terms and feel super comfortable even yeah. saying like, I don't understand. Or can you slow down and explain that to me? Or like you're throwing mm-hmm. out terms, bro, that, you know, They use it as a a way to sort of like intimidate and exclude. And there's no reason for it. If we have the confidence in ourselves to just say, well, wait a minute, like, can you slow down? And that's, that's okay. You know, sometimes Mm -hmm. I also feel like people aren't necessarily trying to exclude. It's just that they're, they're so used to operating in a certain way that they're not thinking like, oh, I might be, you know, spouting these things that maybe not everybody understands. They don't have enough self-awareness, right? Yes. So 
Yeah. I, one of the things that I, I really love about what you do, and you even said it before, it's like you touched on this idea when it comes to business of evolution. Mm -hmm. And I really want to talk about that in more depth because we talked about, and I, I totally agree, everything that we're taught, everything that even we build businesses based upon yeah. is based on this system of like industrialism, right? So how do we, because you, you are studying, you're seeing patterns, you're seeing what's coming next. How do we specifically as women, because that's who the audience is here, how do we kind yeah. of break out of doing things the way that they used to be done because they do not work for us. They don't. And mm -hmm. here we are building businesses based on systems, processes that benefit somebody other than us. It's like, my whole mm -hmm. thing is like, this is why we can't break past the million dollar mark because we're building things that don't work for us. So yep. what's next? Or are we just going to keep tripping over ourselves? So for so long, if we talk about trends, the thing that I talk so passionately about is, first of all, the subconsciousness that we have in, in our mindset as women. We, we have to understand, you know, women were not even able to own a business until 1988. My God. We were not even allowed to own a business until 1988. Just think about that. That was so close. And and before that, if they had to have a co-signer, it had to be a husband. They even went farther in the law to say even a male child could be a co-signer for a woman to own a business. It's like, give it to everybody but a woman. Give it to the I dog, did not the cat, know that. the goat. Yeah. Yeah. I graduated from high school in 1988. I did not crazy? know that a woman could not own a business on her own. Could not wow. own a business. We could not. So we were already talking about from an evolutionary standpoint, you know, we were already behind the curve in knowledge and about money and finance and, and stocks and, and, and board of directors. We were so far behind. We were just trying to get in the race. And then once yeah. we got in the race, it was like when others started to join, we had an individualistic society that, okay, there's only one spot for a woman. Woman, right. Yeah. So if I'm running the race, I'm not going to share with you my knowledge. I'm not going to share with you how I did it because there's only one spot. And so yeah. when you're talking about the next wave, I truly believe it is going to have to be a communal and a collaborative effort. And we have to open more doors, which is the reason why I love what you do, because you're <laughs> opening the space for more women to a, you know, not only meet each other and network, but to also learn and then to see if there are similar points of connection to collaborate in. That is going to be so key. And we're already seeing it now. And mm -hmm. if there there are if there are other powers that be, if I'm just going to do a quotation that wants to stop women from evolving and thriving, right? But when you get multiple powerhouses from different mountains of influence and industry and music and tech, and, and they're all coming together, that is a movement, baby. You can't oh even God. stop that train if you tried, honey. And so we have to, as often I said, it is about encouraging each other. And my light doesn't dim yours down. But if anything, when we come together, we have a greater shine. And so yeah. I truly believe that that collaborative effort that women that are not intentional about it. And it's just me, me, me and my company, my company, my company, you are going to put a cap on how big and wide you're going to, and far and how long you're going to be able to play this game. Mm -hmm. But if you can collaborate and you know how to play well with others, mm -hmm. that is going to allow you the space and the freedom to infiltrate other markets that oftentimes you could have been neglected or not privy to before playing well with others. Mm. And it's something that women do innately well. We connect mm -hmm. with other yeah. women really easily. It's so natural. Mm -hmm. What's not natural is this, and not that we don't collaborate, because I do believe that we do that really well, but it's it's like when we layer on the business part of it, that's where it starts to get messy, sticky, who gets what, how do we mm -hmm. divide this up? I, I feel like that's the part because I, I do see a lot of women coming together. We're supporting each other. We're talking, we're networking, mm -hmm. we're opening these doors and everything. But then it comes to like, okay, let's get down to business and start exchanging money. That mm -hmm. gets mm -hmm. 
messy. And that is where it's like, well, wait a minute, that's mine. That's not yours. I started this. You didn't. How can we get past that if you have any, just even like the first steps of how we can get past that? Yeah. I would say oftentimes when I do see those those splits or those divorces, when people that come together to do something, a lot of times, oftentimes, it is when we did not set an intention. Hmm. Okay. What I mean by that is if I connect with you and I have a reason to why I want to connect with Adrian, right? And I and in your mind, you have a reason why you want to connect with a Latia Vaughn, right? But but we never sent a, a we never put an intention together for the collaboration. So what ends up happening is when there's that points of contention, the thing that should always solve it was what was the reason why we came together to begin with? Does it align with this? If not, throw it away. Right. And then with setting an attention, we have to be honest and vulnerable about it. Right. There's some people that come to me not because necessarily they want a mentor, but they really want the open door to how did you get to Google or how did you do meta? How did you just be open and honest about it? Because we can always we'll have less hang ups, less mess ups, less heartaches. If we can be really upfront in the beginning, my goal is to not be on a team, but I want to be on the stage. OK, well, let's pray for the stage. Okay, My goal coming together is I want to be able to make a certain amount of money by a collaborative event. OK, well, let's get to the goal. And as long as we've hit that goal, your need should be fulfilled because we set the original intention. And I think that's just the start of it really is that that vulnerability, that honesty and setting what the mutual intention is for us to come together. And I think that could start a less stickier process in the end. Yeah. And you use that word sticky, right? Because I do think that it is sticky. So evolution is not always pretty, right? And it's not always smooth. So we are Mm. going to have to be bumping up against these things and leaning into those messy parts as well. And I think that that's something that we have to build the muscle for because again, like societal programming, everything needs to look pretty and we need to, you know, what, what's the word? Like, uh, row, not row the boat. What's the, what's the thing? Not, uh, rock the (laughs) <laughs> Don't rock the boat, baby. I love the wave. I love the wave you're doing. I'm right with you, girl. Come on. <laughs> oh my God, rock the boat. Like not not rock the boat. And and this is the stuff too that I do think that women need to practice because we're not practiced at it at all. Mm-hmm. We're used to maybe taking orders, maybe even giving orders, right? Especially if we've come up through corporate, we, we sort of know what that's all about. This collaboration thing is, it's foreign. And so in addition to the work that you're doing, are there any other like, you know, models that we could look at or like companies that are really doing it right? Or like even, you know, people or groups, like, because I'm always searching for that. And I, mm. I feel like I don't always find it. And one other thing, and even with my group with She Leads, I I get Mm. nervous sometimes because I'm like, I don't want to be exclusionary. Like, oh, Mm. even when it comes to women, like I love women. I, I want us all to be doing things together. But do I think that women have all of the answers and should be the ones that are completely in power? No. You know, mm-hmm. I think it should, we should have balanced humanity. It, it should be, it's like human leads, you know, that, that's yeah. more yeah. my perspective because I think together when we have all of those different points of view and, you know, diversity of thought and all of that, that's when all of the, the beauty can happen. And I'm always looking around for like, well, you know, who's doing it right? Who, who can we like pattern things after? Is there anybody Mm -hmm. or should we just try and experiment to evolve? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think in terms of, okay, so your personal question is, is who is doing it? It really depends if we look at a corporation at what level. So there are there are corporations that are being much more inclusive. However, when you go up the chain, there is a bottleneck and there's no funnel to bring that diversity up on on the higher, you know, end and higher spectrum. And so it really depends because you may see the diversity on the lower level, you know, and then nothing at the on the boardroom level. And then you have some that are expressing more diversity on the the top tier 
However, there are some corporations, not all, that still has not created pathways for more voices of diversity to still come up the ranks. I don't think any company yet has created the perfect model. What I always do if I'm walking with a company or business owner based on where you currently are is to say, okay, I love the way statistics show that the way they did this for where you're at was great. And this piece for the, and then when you put it all together, it is a completely new structure that is tailored to you. So it's really in two parts, right? I look at what areas and what companies are doing this area well that you need specifically. And then how can we customize based on your timeline and where you are a structure that is really molded to you and your business and where you're at and your goals. And so when you talked about even diversity, um, you know, even diversity in the boardroom, I was just talking about this on a panel one day about even looking at Uh, even those with disabilities being in boardrooms, right? They did a study, even those who may be on the spectrum, they oftentimes were not granted opportunities of elevation and executive levels because they are not outward. They are not, they wanted the atypical boys just come on team, but they were leaving so many geniuses out of that decision pool and creation phase because they were introverts. And so you see more companies now, which I love kind of being a little bit more open to those who may have the disability of being on this spectrum, but they have a beautiful genius to offer, right, at that level, and allowing them to lead through that and how they lead best. Mm -hmm. And I think more companies that allow people to lead in their zone of genius in their best way, you don't have to be the team rah-rah cheerleader, but there can be another way uh, that you can offer your skill set to the overall uh, objective of the business that's going to push it forward. And Mm. so I know that's a long way around. I wish there was one model for one company, but what I found best is taking the pieces from each that are doing the parts well that will serve your company best. And then in those conversations, oftentimes we would even customize that. Like the conversation will start by looking at, oh, this is what they did here. But even in us talking, it sparks something that says, oh, we need to change that. You know, I've never thought about this. And so it really does end up creating your own thing, you know, your own animal in a sense that allows your company to thrive. But I wish there was, but that, that game of entrepreneurship it is the jungle. It literally is. And I actually just, we just released, um, I just had an interview with Forbes and they just released it where I was saying, run your business like a jungle, not a garden. Ooh. And the reason why, yeah, the reason why, because entrepreneurship and and companies are, is so, there's so many complexities and, and little uh, things that can shift and change. And the difference between a garden and a jungle, a garden If you do not physically attend to it and micromanage it, it can die within 15 days. And jungles have been thriving for over 17 million years, okay? Mm. It is because there are properties and principles and laws, right, that a jungle has to still allow people to create within this zone of genius, right? So, you know, the trees don't mess with the monkeys and and, uh, and the insects doesn't mess with, they all, it's a collaborative ecosystem that allows the entity to keep growing Instead of being meticulous, like, you, OK, you got too many black women on your thing. You got too many, you know, too many women voices on here. And when we try to pull the reins because it's that sense of control, I have to have control. We actually end up, we don't realize, halting the growth and and the success of our business instead of allowing to set confined, say, OK, as long as you stay within these perimeters, y'all can do it. As long mm-hmm. as you, you know, are able to to uphold our, our work ethics and our morals and and the, and let me hear, let me hear mm. what you have to say because studies show that even employees oftentimes will never give input that seems radical in fear of if it goes wrong, the blame would be on me because yeah. that's back the reins that we had in school. If you do something wrong, I'm going to reprimand you. I'm yeah. going to, you're going to get a demotion. You're going to be the first one off on lay, layoffs. But that was the culture during that time that, corporations have set. So if you say this is a place where we welcome innovation, we welcome voices, and as long as we stay within the confines that holds true to our missions and value, let's see how big we can really get. Let's make a unicorn. Less control, right? It's a different type of control. It is setting the confines and the climate mm. and, and then allowing people to kind of live within that. 
that realm. I love this so much. I, I, I'm I'm so tuned into exactly what you're saying. It's like creating the conditions for yeah. this to to thrive and to grow. And it's like everything does work together, even even when they're separate. Like you're talking about, yeah. you know, the the bugs on the ground or the moss on yeah. the the tree. Like they all stumble upon one another and somehow bring something to yes. that, right? Yes. And that is so exciting to to think about. Like how then do you create some type of, and it might, like, I even think like, maybe it's not called a business, right? Like, Mm -hmm. how do you Mm -hmm. create that condition for all of those things to evolve, using your words, right? Evolve Mm -hmm. and see what happens. It's almost like the great experiment. It's, It's the foundation of what entrepreneurship is, right? Yeah. Having a hypothesis, testing, seeing what sticks, seeing what adds value, seeing what people purchase or what they gravitate toward. Mm -hmm. That's what you're describing. And I love that. I've never heard that before. And I just think it's so wild and exciting and innovative. And I want to create my own jungle right now. <laughs> yes, it's, come on, girl, let's do it. Come on, come on. What you bring to the jungle? jungle. <laughs> it's so funny. One of my <laughs> students is, oh my gosh, like these NYU students are just, they're amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't oh, even know any other word. For, I have this one student and I, I won't say his name. I think people are going to know him. But he's he's filming a movie, and it's all about uh, tracking the elusive jaguar in India. Mm. And, he, and he's actually been doing this since he was very young, like eight years old. And he's now, you know, twenty wow. something years old in college. And he's he's already done a little documentary, and now it's this is like a bigger one. And you're talking about this, and he just gave us last night like this whole like he told us everything that he was doing. He opened his kimono, which was like so interesting and told us everything Mm -hmm. about the film and the financing and how everything works. And it was so parallel to everything that goes on in in entrepreneurship, but it was like working together, getting the footage that's needed. How do you like bring all of that together? The danger that you put yourself in. I love how the universe works sometimes. Yeah because I didn't think that we'd be talking about this. And yet I have that in my mind from last night. It was so moving and powerful. And then here you are talking about the jungle, but we were talking about the jungle yesterday, you know, last night. Wow. And it's fascinating. And I do think that can teach us a lot, right? Because we are nature. Oh yeah, we are. And, And the thing about it is we have a natural intuitive nature, right? Where as creatures, as humanity, that's the reason why the antelope knows not to go to the line. The line never has sign up says, you know, I'm going to bite your tail when you come over here. <laughs> we just feel it, right? We feel it. That's the reason why even rats can sense a cataclysmic event within two weeks before it actually happens, like a tsunami, right? Mm. But what happens is because of social media, because of even with being this digital age, we have become desensitized to our own natural intuition, even when we deal with business dealings, partnerships, because, yeah. you know, and but that's what the jungle and is super intuitive. It's a feeling of energies. And so even when you talk about where we're going, I truly believe and predict that a lot of companies, the heads are going to come together to meditate, to set an intention for the company. Because we're bringing so much uh, tech and AI into our ecosystems, right? There's going to have to be another level. of Now we have to say, where does humanity go? right? Where does humanity go? How are we going to now evolve as a race now that we're bringing so many technological advances into everything that we do, right? What happens? Are we capping off our creativity or are we becoming crazy efficient? Which one is it, right? And so I really believe that leadership and key leaderships, uh, we are going to have to have more conversations about setting intentions, becoming into an agreement, into an alignment, even when it comes to uh, energetically. So it's beyond just the 
rules and regulations, but I can feel that there is also a connection between us. You know how you meet somebody and you don't know why you like them, but you just yeah. do until you yeah. put your finger on. You know, like I love, I, I love you, Adrian. I, we I just know, met, right? I, I love you what? too. We <laughs> sisters. Okay, I don't even have to real. But you know, so I lean off of that feeling. You know, and the same goes when there's an inkling. You know, that thing that's inside of us that's like, um, mm, like our stomach turns. We don't know why, but sometimes yeah. we don't explore it. Right? We just go based on what the rules say. And mm. so when it comes to leadership, even coming forth, even with women, I'll give another nugget really on not shying away from your intuitive side that we also have when we are leading our businesses, because I also think that's also going to be a beautiful component into some of the decisions that we make and who we decide to play with in this Mm. next wave of evolution. Mm. So let me ask, almost like a practical question because I'm so yeah. I'm so interested in this and I've oh, I've always been yeah. so interested personally in you know futurist mega trends like always mm-hmm. like I I always ate that up and not because I want to predict the future but just like there's a lot of indications in how we are right now that if you pay attention you can see where we're going, right? It's, yep. And women are so good at it. We do it with our kids. Yep. If you if you do this, these are the ten things that are going to happen to you. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. like, don't don't get on that bike without the helmet. <laughs> right, but right. How how do you sort of, I guess, you know, scan the environment and sort of come to these informed conclusions, or at mm-hmm. least maybe it's not conclusions. Probably isn't the right word, but at least mm-hmm. like informed indications. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the yeah, word is. Yeah, yeah. So it really it really depends. There are some things that are very glaring to me out of nowhere. Like you don't see this coming. Okay. Just sit back and wait. And then there's some things, but being a futurist, that's why I tell people it's it's different, you know, is not being a psychic. There is no one fixed future. But if I had to give the future an image, it is a constantly moving wave, right? And there's so many plot points on this wave. And your goal is, depending on where you want to go and hit in the future, is to make sure you can get enough of those plot points that will give you at the peak of the best possible outcome. Does that make sense? So if you look at trends that are coming and it always has has to be backed up. It has, I can't just go into the room and just say, you know what? I just got a feeling that y'all just about to lose $14 million. I just got, think of it, baby, prove it. Okay. And so now I have to back that up with science data, right? Trends that are coming, decisions that were even made in the political climate. People don't realize that also yeah. affects and impacts industries with AI government. And so mm-hmm. I, if my husband tells you, I do rigorous studying daily because I have to be in tune about what's happening across the entire landscape and how this point in culture or this decision that's happening over here with climate change is going to impact you over there. And I know you in the beauty industry, baby, you don't think it's going to impact you, but it will. And these are the reasons why. So when Mm. you say, what are the practical things? I live a life of study and I will always live a life of study Mm. and deep research. It has to go beyond YouTube. I go to medical journals. I go through even finding the original sources, even certain books that are no longer in print, right? Kind of going back into the ice ages, right? Because that is the original form because so many things have changes, even changes on the internet, you don't know sometimes what to trust. And so it's an array of things. And, but sometimes things are glaring, but I always, we always have to map it up with the research and the data that can support that hypothesis of a particular outcome that could happen. So either you want to do, figure out what is possible, what is probable and what is preferable. So Mm -hmm. the goal is to always get you to the best possible outcome for what's about to happen. Mm, So good. I I (laughs) I'm eating this up. Like, oh my God. I I love this idea of always just always learning, like always like just putting it all together. It's so amazing. It's also it's super entrepreneurial, right? And it's artistic and creative too, which is also so beautiful. Let's like hone yeah. in on women and women entrepreneurs. I'm even going to ask like women entrepreneurs that are a little bit later in life. So 45, mm-hmm. 50. What yeah. do you think is sort of the best track 
or direction for us to focus our attention. Mm. So now if we're talking about women entrepreneurs, or do we want to say focus their attention in their personal life, a direction for their business, direction for how to present themselves? For their business. And I'm, I'm specifically focused on how can we stop sort of doing all of the things and being on this treadmill and not making a lot of progress because we're all so yeah. busy, but yeah. busy yeah. doesn't get you revenue. No. And so, so specifically it, something that really stood out when you said women, uh, you know, in their forties and above. Okay. I personally believe and feel that there is a turning when it comes to women that are of a certain age. And here's the reason why. Okay. Uh, studies show that even some of the younger generations, they found this is just statistics. OK, I love my m- millennials, you know, I, you know, I myself, but um, shows a mental fortitude that those who are an upper age has that can yield you being the boss of the boss of the bosses, right? Because we have had to go through the drudge and the ranks to even get a little piece of that, okay? Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you the good in that. And that is the reason why there is also women of a certain age. Ooh, I feel this. Um, that even in terms of beauty, that is the reason why when I say there's a turning, there are certain high fashion houses that are turning their attention towards women of of older ages to be the face of their campaigns. We see it with perfume. We're seeing it with Louis Vuitton. We're seeing yeah. it with a lot of these high-end fashion houses because there is a certain grace, dignity, and, and even a, a presence that we have that we may not knew uh, in years past how to really own. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I'm talking about women that are of certain age, I'm going to talk to you about really owning it and, and really with your ownership and who you are, what you stand for and what you put in this earth to do, do not be afraid of the unraveling. Now, let me explain. When you think of unraveling, we're going back to the jungle. We think of somebody that is wild and out of control, but no, 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 no. See, as women in from a corporate America, in order to play nice with the men and the statistics and the laws, we had to live in the confines of a box. Right. So which means when we have an idea, we have intuitive nature, we were not invited to the tables. We were never allowed to unravel to the ends of ourselves creatively, our ingenuity, our, our decisions to see how far we can stretch and how wide we can really go. And so I would say to women that are of that certain age, the things that you've always wanted to do, the guesstimations in your head say, I wonder what would happen. This is the time and the season to unravel because I guarantee you, if you embrace this unraveling of who you are and owning your power, it is going to make the world turn. Right. Mm. Because we are so confined by algorithms and everybody doing the same thing, looking the same way. And because this TikTok trend happened, there are not people unraveling. Right. Because when you unravel, you become that huge oak tree that we can't help but to recognize you, honey. But when I have to play by the rules of society in the digital age that a lot of the younger generations are doing right now, this is just the way we do it. It's systematic. Okay, you're going to get the going to get the likes and then there's not too many oak trees anymore. there's a lot of little bushes, a lot of little shrubs, but there is not many presence that just stands in their firmness and who I am. And with that. Okay. I would also say if you want to maximize your entrepreneurial journey, those who are older, is to always have those who are also younger inside of your camp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not only for you to groom them, but they will give you another layer of insight to the very industry and market you want to penetrate. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And so there's a win-win for everybody. They receive your wisdom, your nuggets, your guidance, because you've been there, done that, honey. Okay. You're going to get over it. And then in return, they will be able to offer you a keen insight and an eye to an area of the market because of their age that you may not be privy to yet. So it's collaborative. Back to collaboration. Yeah. I feel this deep and hard, honestly. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's so funny because, well, uh, okay. I mean, I think this goes without saying. You're mm-hmm. amazing. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to start there. But I really feel this, especially with She Leads, because I, I would talk about like, well, who's my audience? And, and it's like, I've got, I've got these older women that are, you know, like me. And yeah. 
then I have like college girls and Mm -hmm. people that are super young. And I'm like, well, why are they like, why are they here? It's odd, you know, because it's at we're at like different ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what you're saying. And, And I even felt it in class last night. Like I literally I took a seat. In, in class last night, I, I, I sat with the students and I had mm-hmm. the other students get up and tell us things. And I said, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I wouldn't be able to do that. I don't get that. Tell me. And they yeah. loved it. Yeah. They loved it. They loved me yeah. sitting with them. And I'm like, You're that's rich. what we need to do. Yeah. We need to sit with them because I, yes. I'm like, it's just not comfortable to stand up and spill my knowledge because my knowledge is great, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's not everything. And I Mm -hmm. recognize that. And it's not to put me down. It's just to say, but wait, there's so much more. Like let's, let's experiment here. And I I love that. And this is such good stuff. So like people who are listening and I hope ever, I, I want so many people to listen to this episode. Like I, I don't even know. We're going to have to like figure out what we can do to get this out to everybody because this yes. is where the power is. The power is in this collaboration and it's not yes. just, it's not just women together. It's not just older women together. It is these bridges. It, this is what we need to do. And it's, everybody, right? It's like all different cultures, all different people, all different ways that we look and think and all of it. That's what needs to happen. It's the jungle. It's the jungle. jungle. Welcome to the jungle. (laughs) Welcome to the jungle. He leads 2024 live. Come on. Welcome to the jungle. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I should totally make she leads 2024 called welcome to the jungle. Come on. Come on. (laughs) <laughs> and, and I better be in the room. Let me tell you something. Uh, yes, and yes. I have this experience together. The, but what you said is exactly what you said. We've been it just even even when it, racially with segregation. No, you stay over here. No, you stay over there. And I don't want you to drink from this fountain. And then with the younger people and the older people, no, you guys don't know what it was like growing up. And and the young people are like, well, you don't know what it's like being me. Everybody tries to create their separate mm. uh, spaces of being segregated. But the beauty is in the jungle. That's how we can. That's when we can really grow this thing. When I appreciate the parts that each of us brings to this experience on this earth for life. And, yes. um, and so mm. my goal and my hope is that more people recognize that, receive that and implement it just bit by bit. Cause I know sometimes we're in, we're so used to our systems and sometimes it's hard, especially we have control. Like for me, there are certain times where I say, okay, it's going really push control. Like shut up to you. Like <laughs> just to do it. <laughs> you know, I, have to, I have to tell myself that. Right. Because again, when we've worked so hard to get to a certain place, I am afraid of blowing it up by making the wrong decision. Right. Yeah. But I rather blow up, blow it up than somebody else blowing it up. Does that make yeah. sense? I yeah. rather make the mistake myself than somebody else executing the very idea that I had because it's always energy, right? And it going crazy across the earth only because I was too afraid to own it. Yeah. And to say, you know what? I have a feeling. Let's go with it. Whatever happens, happens. If it's not a loss, it's a lesson, right? But I guarantee I can take those lessons to create an even bigger win. I love this. Come on, let's go to the jungle. <laughs> Oh my God. I feel like I could talk to you forever. And I I do want to talk to you forever. So how can people sort of get in touch with you? I mean, I do hope that people listen to this more because your message and everything that you're saying, people need to hear this over and over again so that we do feel comfortable in this doing things differently, doing things in ways that, that have not happened before. The jungle is ever evolving. We as humans are ever evolving. We shouldn't be following rules from 1998. We just shouldn't. So how can people follow you, get in touch with you, read your books, all the things? Yes. You can visit my website, www.latiavon, and it is V-A-U-G-H-A-N, dot com. It's Latia Vaughn on all social media outlets. You can put hashtag the dream pusher. Mm-hmm. You'll all, you'll find me. I'll pop up whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter. And even personally, one of the things I've had to do personally to evolve is I've never promoted what I've been doing for over 20 years. This These first, I would say the last two, three years, 
I've just now started to come out to play. Does that make sense? In terms of sharing with the world what I've been doing for over 20 years. And so I'm well, super we've excited. We've been missing about- out. We have oh, been missing out. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But, I, but I'm super excited even, you know, speaking with you and talking with you. You know, my book is on the website, it's on Amazon. And I just love to hear about people's journeys and, and to see where they are and however I can serve them and their company. But, but I do believe we're at a very critical point in our evolutionary period. And so if we can get ahead of the curve, we can create the best possible outcome for our future. I love that so much. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today, for sharing all of your wisdom and just having such a fun, I mean, this was so much fun. We had such a fun conversation. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. To everybody, I'll, hopefully I'll see you at 2024 She Leads. Woo! <laughs> this and all of our episodes are brought to you by the She Leads Podcast Network, the podcast network for women by women. Thanks so much for listening to the She Leads Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support us, please share it with others. Make a personalized post about what you took away on social media and please leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. This helps our guests and our show to continue to gain visibility and traction. To learn more about how She Leads Media helps women to gain visibility, you can follow us on Instagram at She Leads Media or you can head on over to SheLeadsMedia.com. If you'd like to network with me and other amazing women, don't forget to join us each year for the She Leads Live conference. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon. The She Leads Podcast Network.